Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're so happy that you're back as we continue to support you on your journey towards achieving CNE success or towards renewing your CNE. Our mission is simple here at Dr. Sellers Educate. It is to support you to achieve certification or to keep your certification. Just like every episode, we want to make sure that you have two things in front of you. First is going to be your study worksheet. And then second, go ahead and pull out Billings and Halstead and Dr. Caputi's CNE review book. Okay. Now, this is if you're on your journey towards CNE. If you're on your journey towards CNE CL, then you should be using Teresa Schallenberger CNE clinical review book. All right. So those are the housekeeping tips for now. I want to make one announcement related to a new series that we have called Summer Series. Um, it is going to include 10 sessions that are going to offer one contact hour each that's going to help you close your knowledge gaps over the summer. We know that many of you, based on feedback you have shared with us, do have additional time over the summer. So we want to be able to leverage that in a way that can be productive and help you move forward with your professional development plans, whatever those may be. In this series, we're going to be talking about exam analysis, A to Z. What is it that you need to know to prepare for the c &E exam or to just be really good at understanding the concepts that you have to review every single time your students complete an exam, okay? So with Billings and Halstead, that's going to be our primary resource for our time with this topic um, for this session. And then over the next two months or so, we'll cover every single topic from A to Z related to exam analysis. We always like hearing your feedback. So we have developed an evaluation that you can complete to let us know other topics that you would like to hear about right here on our YouTube channel or on our podcast, depending on how you're listening to us. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into our content. We like to start by highlighting what we are going to accomplish in our time together. So we want to take a look at the objectives to get us started. Specifically, we'll be looking at what are the concepts that are going to help you close your knowledge gaps so that you can ensure that you are ready for the exam or that you are ready to complete your renewal process. Okay, so A to Z exam analysis, that is what we will be focusing on. Let's take a look at our thought-provoking question. So we have a nurse educator that is evaluating the validity and reliability of a recent exam. When determining what actions to take based on the statistical analysis data, what response would indicate a good understanding of the purpose of the exam analysis process? We have four choices. They are A, the data will be reviewed to determine which questions to remove from the exam. B, the exam blueprint will be re-evaluated based on exam scores and student feedback. C, the exam review feedback from students will determine which questions to eliminate. Or D, the questions not answered correctly should be reevaluated for extra points. Okay, so you can think about what is going to be the best option when we think about which response out of these four would indicate a good understanding of the purpose of the exam analysis process. What will we be focusing on during our time together? Four key areas. First, the you all as the learner will be able to describe the exam development process and statistics associated with that process. Number two, what is included in an item analysis? You as a learner will walk away having a good understanding of concepts that are used to evaluate exams as well as each individual item. Using our two primary resources, again, Billings and Halstead Teaching and Nursing 6th Edition, and then Dr. Caputi's c &E Review Book. If you're on your journey to c and -E the good news is when you're using um, Dr. Teresa Schallenberger's resource, you will see that there are not questions, as well as looking at the c and -E exam blueprint, there are not questions specifically on your exam related to exam analysis, because that is not within the scope of practice or really the, the expectation of the role as a clinical faculty member. However, it's always good to have an understanding as it relates to some of these terms that we will be describing um, on our journey with these snapshots. First is, where do I start? That's the first question. Well, we're going to start with analysis. In order to best support our students in closing their knowledge gaps, it's really important that we start with our exam blueprint that is going to map back to those learning objectives that we expect our students to accomplish at the end of our course, 
as well as looking at when we think about the breakdown of that detailed or that exam blueprint, looking at how many questions are aligned with the different levels of Bloom's taxonomy and what is going to be the content that we have already identified in our lesson plan with our students to ensure they have the foundational resources to help them have a solid comprehension of terms that we are going to cover within our class. We like to role model these behaviors that we're talking about here at Dr. Sellers Educate. So that's why we always like for you to have your study worksheet in front of you. Uh, we highly recommend that you consider using a learning guide that is also a best practice with our students when we're in the classroom with them and developing an exam. A learning guide is not the same thing as a study guide. It helps guide students in their learning process so they have a good understanding of what concepts they can expect to be covered on an exam, okay? So again, the analysis process is strongly connected to that detailed or that exam blueprint that's gonna help us close our knowledge gaps. When we think about the A, the analysis part, there really are key, what we like to call concepts of measurement. And that's what Billings and Halstead, as well as Dr. Caputi calls it as well. What are these specific terms that we're looking at as we are analyzing and taking a look at that statistical analysis data? So the what, that's what we wanna identify and the who so as, or, and the how. So as we're talking through A to Z, all of these wonderful concepts that you're gonna have a, a strong understanding about at the end of our journey with the series, you want to continuously think about the what. What terms are we talking about in every single snapshot? What does this information mean to us when we look at the exam analysis process, when we look at the item analysis process? What is the definition of each? Okay, and then the how. We, we have to understand what the range is, for example, reliability. Okay, let's just take that one. That's a really good one. When we look at Billings and Halstead pages 455 and 456, we see a really good breakdown of validity and reliability. In this episode, we're not going to go in depth into terms. We're simply starting with a general term, which is analysis. Okay, so the how, the range. How is the range of the specific concept or statistical data that the exam analysis is given to us and the exam analysis statistical report is given to us what does that range mean to me related to this specific exam? How am I going to use the information knowing what the normal range or the expected range is for reliability? How am I going to use that information based on the data from the statistical report? Okay, so again, we're starting with analysis because it is a broad term. And then what's going to happen through our journey is that we're going to break down each of these concepts, talking about the definition, the what, and then talking about the how, what is that range for that specific concept that we're looking at. All right, so let's go back to our thought-provoking question. If you chose B, you are correct. Now, I know it was pr it's probably going to be a close um, run when it comes to option B and option C, because we do use the feedback from students when we are conducting our exam review to consider whether or not we did a really good job or really poor job at writing an exam question. However, we know that it is not best practice to eliminate questions, okay? So that's why C is not the best response that would indicate a good understanding. B is really the best response, okay? So when we think about a nurse educator's response to say, the exam blueprint, I'm gonna take a look and reevaluate, was there strong alignment based on how students scored on the exam? I'm gonna look at every single question on that exam. I'm gonna look at that blueprint to see how did it map back or how did it align with the content that I covered in the course? And am I confident in the data that this statistical report is giving me? Okay, when we think about the term validity, this specific indicator um, of validity answers this question. Does it accurately assess what the evaluator intended to evaluate? Okay, again, this is going to be pulled from your Billings and Halstead textbook, pages 455 and 456. And then the definition or the question that reliability answers is, 
is the test trustworthy? Okay, is it dependable? Is it precise? Is it predictable? Is it consistent? Will the same instrument yield the same results with a different group of students? Okay, so again, thinking about validity and reliability, those are, are some of the terms that we'll be talking through on this journey together. All right, so hopefully we didn't get you too confused with the content in this introduction, this first step in our process on our journey of exploring A to Z, everything you need to know related to exam analysis to get you ready for the exam. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sellers Educate. Please reach out if you have questions and we'll see you in the next snapshot. Have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.